Hey everyone, it's Holmes from Rome Story Books, and before we start, Cassie from The Bookish Four Eyes shouted me out on her channel, so hello to new subs and thank you so much Cassie. Today I'm here to share with you a review of Heartberries by Therese Marie Myatt. This was a 5 star read for me and I'm going to tell you why. Heartberries is about Therese's experience being diagnosed with bipolar disorder, motherhood, being put in a rehab center, and how painful but essential healing is. This is unlike any other memoir I've ever read and feels like the standard I'll now hold every memoir to. This is set out as a letter to her partner and it is stunning. Every word, every page, every chapter is completely fire. I knew from like the first or second page this would be a five star read, which is rare because usually the love of a book grows the more I read it. This one I loved right off the bat. If I had a copy of this book, which I don't because 120 people are waiting for it at the library, I could theoretically open to any page and read a paragraph and read it out to you and you would understand what this book is about. I wanted to know what I looked like to you. Like a sin committed and a prayer answered, you said. One of the things I love about this book is what it doesn't have. It doesn't have times, dates, or scientific jargon for diagnoses. Most Western memoirs that feature mental illness or memoirs in general have a linear this happened, then this happened, on this day, at this time, and it is one of the things that really prevents me as a reader from enjoying the text and losing myself in it. In Myatt's case, it is the author's lived experience, day by day, moment by moment, memory by memory. All of that jargon and need for a definition of mental illness and counting of days and years is so unnecessary in a text like this. In the case of Heartberries, the author is present every step of the way. What happens to her in the book, except with the little luxuries and asides and hindsights. Honesty feels like too small a word to describe what the text really does. When she talks about herself, she's so transparent, it's searing. I've never had a book like this where I feel like I can't even see the text. All I see is Therese talking directly to herself or to me. There's none of that safe, cushy barrier of a book that slightly separates you from the experience. Myatt grabs you by the collar and makes you look as she had to look at herself during therapy. Once I picked it up, I couldn't put it down. It was so compulsively readable, but also to put it down without finishing it felt like it would be disrespectful to her somehow. She scrutinizes herself in a way that is fierce but so necessary. She scrutinizes herself in a way that is fierce, but so necessary. During the course of this text, she is in a rehabilitation center and she talks about her experience as a First Nations woman surrounded by so much whiteness. In white culture, forgiveness is synonymous with letting go. In my culture, I believe we carry pain until we can reconcile it through ceremony. Pain is not framed like a problem with a solution. I don't even know that white people see transcendence the way we do. I'm not sure their dichotomies apply to me. This book is therapeutic, not in the sense that it's cathartic or it'll make you cry, but that someone can go through what she did and survive it. If you've ever been to therapy, if you've ever gone through it, it is painful and an exacting process, which requires you to do some serious work. And I appreciate that so much. That Myatt was able to convey the grisliness of therapy without flinching or looking away or using terms that are easily thrown around to soften the blow, terms like love, forgiveness, and self-worth. I think self-worth is a white invention. It asks people to further separate one person from another. It asks people to assess their values and implies people have worth. It seems like identity capitalism. Whoa. When I read that statement, I sat back and I thought about it, and I was like, she's so right. Since then, my perspective on people and self-worth and how we sum up a person's worth has entirely shifted. My story is one where she demonstrates that although society would deem her undesirable, she is capable of great, wonderful things while being mentally ill while struggling with motherhood and relationships. She reiterated something that I feel really deeply, that the metrics we measure ours and others' successes by is flimsy and insubstantial, and if we let go of those metrics, we would be so much more relaxed and so much more accepting as a people. This book is like a beacon in the darkness, but when you turn on the light, you see all the things hiding in the dark, right? 
this process of airing out all your dirty laundry isn't pretty, but it's compelling. I felt so much hope for Therese. God, sometimes she would admit something and I just wanted to hold her so tightly. A lot of people will say that this book is so raw and that's not really a word I would use because it has a connotation of being unfinished, rough or crude. I've never seen a book more polished. I would reread passages in this book immediately after I read them just to experience them a second time purely for the craft. I felt her effort in every word and I appreciated that effort. I knew while reading that Mayat gave me the very best of her words, her work. Even in all its ugliness, this book is beautiful. I will say that reading this is like watching a storm and Therese is the eye of it. Therese Marie Mayat is filled with so much love and that really comes through not only in the book but also in the interview at the back of the book where she answers some very detailed questions about some of the passages in the book. I loved the interview because it really brought home why she wrote the book, why it was important to her, and gave her a platform for her voice. Did you have to set the bar so high for the rest of us, Myatt? But of course she had to set the bar so high. She's a First Nations woman with bipolar disorder, publishing her own story in a world where systems are built to prevent that. And now she's a best-selling author because of the strength of her story and the fact that she got to tell it. How do I even end this review? Like, how do I talk about a book that affected me so deeply except to say that I'd love to read it again and again and again? That's all for this review and thank you so much for watching, everyone.